Uh, so good evening everybody at the outset i thanks uh, dr rajiv chawla and uh, dr shalini jaggi uh, for uh, making a part making me a part of this uh, wonderfully organized uh, scientific extravaganza conference uh, thanks uh, dr girish for the nice words uh, today uh, my topic is on management of uh, hyperglycemia in uh, chronic kidney disease So first of all, greetings to all of you from uh, uh, Bangalore. So this will be my outline of my talk: overview, burden, prevalence, uh, CKD classification, pathogenesis, management of hyperglycemia, age recommendation, to work your chronic kidney disease. It is defined based on the presence of either kidney damage or decreased kidney function. by the presence of reduced uh, glomerular filtration rate and or increased urine albumin excretion for 3 or 4 months irrespective of the cause so diabetic kidney disease is one of the leading cause of ckd in uh, diabetes mellitus chronic kidney disease is common in people with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes on the right side of the slide you can see the various risk factors that is ras obesity dietary protein intake smoking oligonephropathy genetic factors hyperlipidemia glycemic control proteinuria glomerular hypertension and systemic blood pressure so if you go by the burden it is the presence of ckd and diabetes individually or especially in combination have a huge economic impact So diabetes is estimated to cost 245 billion dollar. Both uh, like in, in indirect medical cost is around 176 billion dollar, and lost productivity is around 69 billion dollar. In 2013, the CKD estimated to cost 50 billion in Medicare patients over the age of 65, amounting to 20 percent of the health expenditures of the group. prevalence uh, starting on the left hand side of this slide according to the cdc in um, 2017 about 10% of the adults in the us are estimated to have ckd diabetes is the most common or leading cause of uh, ckd according to this second one is the according to the cdc in 2017 approximately 21.3 million people in the us have diabetes at this rate it is estimated that by the year 2050 perhaps as many as one in three adults may have diabetes the prevalence of persistently moderately to severely increased albuminuria in diabetes patients decreased from approximately 20% during the period of 1988-1994 to approximately 15% during the period from 2009 to 2014 by contrast the prevalence of decreased egfr dec defined as an egfr less than 60 increased from approximately 10 to 15% so we all know about this particular classification that is chronic disease chronic kidney disease classification based upon the gfr and the albuminuria so it has been depending upon the gfr the so it has been staged into g1 g2 G three A, G three B, G four four, and G five, starting from normal to the severe kidney failure. Based upon the albumin excretions, uh, it has been classified into A one, A two, A three. That is less than thirty, thirty to three hundred, and three more than three hundred milligram of albuminuria. So, pathogenesis. If you say this is the proposed pathogenesis, how the diabetes. can in uh, cause the diabetic kidney disease like metabolic factors like polyol pathway exosomin pathway protein kinase c pathway age related pathways and the hemodynamic factors that is the systemic and the glomerular hypertension these th two things leads to activation of intracellular signaling pathways oxidative stress dysregulated autophagy and epigenetic changes leading on to inflammation fibrosis finally to the diabetic kidney disease on the right hand side of this slide you can see how the healthy kidney looks and the how the kidney disease uh, kidney looks
coming to the topic of my discussion today that is the management of hyperglycemia so the good glycemic control good glycemic control is important in patients with uh, diabetes and ckd so glycemic control has been shown to prevent the onset and progression of nephropathy it is potentially beneficial to keep the hba1c within an optimal range while ac advocated on hba1c of less than 6.5 target of esd and ada advocated less than 7 so both guidelines emphasize that in the presence of renal failure and hba1c goal still need to be personalized no specific numerical hba1c target was put forth by either group specifically for patients with renal dysfunction so this is an interesting slide showing the kidney heart risk factor management in patients with uh, diabetes and ckd you can see in this pyramid from the bottom if you go the first one is the main thing is uh, a diet exercise a uh, weight management and the smoking cessation the second one is the uh, first line drug therapy like metformin sglt2 inhibitors ras blockade and statin and the to- at the top you can see the goal directed therapy that is the uh, treatment that is glp1 rs uh, tzds uh, yeah, nsmrs anti platelet therapy lipid management glycemic control and blood pressure control so this is the holistic approach for improving outcomes in patients with diabetes and ckd the top most is the lifestyle that is healthy diet that is the most important thing followed by physical activity uh, smoking cessation and weight management the second one is second line you can see the first line drug therapy the sglt2 inhibitors very important to note uh, initiate eg sglt2 inhibitors if egfr is more than or equal to 20 and it can be continued until dialysis or transplant metformin if egfr is more than 30 next uh, comes the targeted therapy uh, that is glp1 ra if needed to achieve the individualized glycemic target or if persistent albuminuria next other glucose lowering drugs if needed to achieve the individualized glycemic target on the right hand side you can see the other drugs like ras inhibitors at maximum tolerated dose if it is patient is hypertensive then non steroidal mrs if persistent albuminuria and normal potassium that is spinalon if blood pressure for blood pressure you can other concentration can calcium channel blockers plus or minus diuretic to achieve the individual targets next if it is still is an issue then you can go for steroidal mra if needed for resistant hypertension like spironolactone on the extreme right side right hand side of this slide you can see the moderate or high intensity statin next is the anti platelet agents for clinical acvd next is the ezetimibe or tc sk9 inhibitor or icosapentaethyl if indicated based upon the acvd risk and lipids so physical activity nutrition weight loss is the corner main treatment main corner stone of the treat, treatment of diabetes with the ckd always the temptation is to look for the dosages of uh, metformin sglt2 inhibitors than the other uh, and then comes the other drugs so if you take the sglt2 inhibitor dosage if you dap up you flows in 10 mg daily so what are the study backup for this so the the dapa ckd uh, uh, study has shown dapa glucose in 10 mg can be started if the egfr is more than 25 and dapa heart failure and declared study has showed uh, if the egfr is more than 30 dapa 10 mg can be started dosing approved by the usfda 
that if the GFR is more than 25 ml per minute. Next comes the EMPA, 10 milligrams daily. EMPA reg study has showed it can be initiated if the GFR is more than 30. Emperor reduced and Emperor preserved has shown that the EMPA 10 milligrams can be started if the GFR is more than 20. So recommended by, approved by USFT is, is if EMPA 10 milligrams only can be started if the EGFR is more than 30 ml per minute. Next, the canagliflozin, 100 milligrams daily. Uh, if EGFR is more than 30, as shown in the Trident study, and it has been approved by USFDA as well. So the, this is a beautiful slide from uh, KDGO 2020 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Diabetes Management in Chronic Kidney Disease. What does it say? It looks very busy, but if you go through the individual things, you can, if somebody is interested, can take a snapshot of it. What does it show? Is patient's factor influencing the selection of glucose lowering drugs other than SGLT2 inhibitors and metformin in type 2 diabetes and CKD. So, just I'll give you an example in this circle. Just you see that avoid hypoglycemia. Uh, that column you follow up. So the more suitable medications are GLP-1-RA, DPP-4 inhibitors, glitter zones, and alpha glucosidase inhibitors. On the pinker side, you can see the less uh, suitable medications, that is sulfonylureas and insulin. Like that, if you go individually, you will be able to decide uh, according to the patient's need, whichever the drug is beneficial. So the metformin, slightly I'll go into detail about metformin because it has been universally used uh, in the management of diabetes. On the left-hand side, if you concentrate in this slide, it is, metformin is recommended treating patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD and an EGF for more than 30 ml per minute. Treat kidney transplant recipient with type 2 diabetes and EGF for more than 30 with metformin according to recommendations for patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD. Monitor EGFR in patients treated with metformin. Increase the frequency of monitoring as and when needed. On the right hand side of this slide, you can see adjust the dosage of metformin when the EGFR is less than 45, which is an important thing to be uh, noted. And most important thing is recommendation is from Kerigo is monitor patients for vitamin B12 deficiency when they are treated with metformin for more than four years. In the center, this is the pictorial de demonstration of how we can use the metformin. Next, the GLP-1 RA. In patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD, on the left hand side, uh, kindly uh, see this. In patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD who have not achieved individualized glycemic targets despite use of metformin and SGLT2 inhib inhibitors treatment, or who are unable to use those medications, we recommend a long acting GLP 1 RA. The choice of GLP-1 RA should prioritize agents with documented cardiovascular benefits. To minimize gastrointestinal side effects, start with the low dose of GLP-1 RA and titrate up slowly. On the right hand side, you can see the GLP-1 RA should not be used in combination with the DPP-4 inhibitors. This is an important line because sometimes in a busy practice, there might be a confusion of adding both. So you should be very, very cautious about this particular thing. Then the, the risk of hypoglycemia is generally low with GLP-1 RA when used alone, but it risk is increased when it is used with sulfonylureas or insulin. So the dosage of uh, sulfonylureas or insulin may need to be reduced. So GLP-1 RA may be preferentially used in patients with obesity, type 2 diabetes, and CKD to promote intentional weight loss. So in the center of this slide, you can see the dosing of our various uh, available GLP-1 RA and dose modification for CKD. If you see uh, the available in the market, there is most frequent, uh, easily available in the market is dulaglutide and uh, 
semaglutide injection for uh, important thing to note is there is no dosage uh, dosage adjustment needed and it is can it is recommended to use if egfr is uh, more than 15 for dulaglutide and sima and oral as well as injection the there is limited data for severe ckd so see once again showing that dosage of uh, dulaglutide you can see uh, no dosage adjustment use with the egfr for more than 15 ml semaglutide no dosage adjustment required there is a limited data for uh, severe ckd so non insulin and uh, insulin preparation in uh, ckd patients you can see the various drugs and the recommendation starting from the bigunides metformin sulfonylureas yeah this is the commonly asked question like which ones to use whether it is uh, glipizide glicoside glimipride and uh, you can see that uh, the comfortable to use when the egfr is uh, more than 45 then pioglitazone when egfr is uh, more than 60 alpha glucosidase inhibitors uh, are like acarbos if the egfr is more than 60 glp1 analogs as we discussed dpp4 inhibitors linagliptin is one of the drug where no dose adjust adjustment is needed whereas other drugs like citagliptin vildagliptin and saxagliptin the dosage has to be reduced to half next comes the at the bottom you can see the rapid acting insulin long acting insulin and the pre mixed insulin all of them need to reduce the dosage by 25% when the egfr is between 10 to 50 adjustment of inpatient insulin regime in ckd this is about the insulin now the stable ckd stage 1 and 2 with no hypoglycemia no dose adjustment is needed according to the sugar values you can titrate the dosage in ckd stage 3 that is uh, egfr between 30 to 39 decrease the dosage by 30% in ckd stage 4 by 50% in ckd stage 5 by 60% so the dosing of insulin therapy in chronic kidney disease on the left hand side you can see Uh, if the egfr is more than 60 in type 1 diabetes is 1 international units per kg and in type 2 diabetes is 0.5 international units per kg if it is between uh, uh, 15 to 60 egfr then it is 0.75 for type 1 uh, and 0.3 to 0.4 international units per kg for type 2 if the egfr is less than 50 uh, then it is 0.5 international units per kg and 0.25 international unit per kg for type 2 diabetes then on the right hand side you can see the dosing and titration of insulins in ckd more than 60 no reduction between 15 to 60 25% reduction less than 15 50% reduction so the always we should note an important point is the two things which may happen dram- dramatically and drastically in diabetes with ckd is hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia because of, of the reduced uh, renal clear, uh, clearance there is these are the two chan- two conditions which may profuse, profuse the uh, create a problem in our patients so always keep educating the patient regarding hypoglycemia as well as hyperglycemia So these are the recommendations according to the AAC in diabetic patients with the CKD. This is looks a busy slide, but only thing the recommendation is when do you monitor the um, creatine level or EGFR level or USCR? Almost the creatine level is uh, out of question now. The recommendation is to monitor EGFR and USCR uh, to prevent the progression of diabetes with uh, ckd so ladies and gentlemen take home message from my talk today is diabetic kidney disease is one of the leading cause of ckd in diabetes mellitus approximately one in three adults with diabetes may have chronic kidney disease chronic kidney disease is classified based upon glomerular filtration rate and albuminuria 
Glycemic control is important in diabetes and CKD, which has been shown to prevent the onset and progression of nephropathy. Management of hyperglycemia includes lifestyle modification and glucose lowering agents like insulin and non-insulin preparation. Thank you for your uh, uh, patient hearing. And I thank once again Dr. Rajiv Chawla for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much.